Yeah, at Bray Lake on Friday the 5th of May, isn't it? 2017, is that right, Dick? Exactly right, Robin. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> and we're going to start this time with Dick seeing if he can get the boat out of the car on his own, right? Okay, Dick, go ahead. Take out all the accessories first. Junk. <laughs> Alright, junk then. Yeah. Right. Now we've got a new. We're testing for the first time this little keel at the front to see if that helps the boat steering. And that, of course, makes it even more difficult to shuffle this boat. So when we had a bigger car that was rusty, it was a lot easier to get out. You heard it? Right, well, yeah, do you want to? Watch it with your, with your camera. No, with your... Yeah. But well, I'm not going to help. <laughs> if he puts his back out, that's his problem. <laughs> Brilliant. There you go. Yeah. We'll go down here. Yeah, it doesn't matter, does it? Right, we'll point out a few things now. I'll do it all. Now, so this is Snoopy's boat for the 2017 Atlantic attempt. Snoopy Snoop 11 with Snoopy the Viking at the front. Navigation light, everything solar powered. And today we're seeing what the effect is on the sailing balance of some sort of keel at the front which might extend that way to see if that improves it. Most of the stuff is the same including the test equipment that we add just for these very late tests. So for example uh, Mobius video camera so get the video as seen from the front. GPS logger which uh, I better remember to switch on so it's tracking nice and accurate and the text to speech so the computer speaks so let's switch on the computer and it should speak the version of the software after waggling the servo so that's when we did it and we also got an FM transmitter here and we got a tranny radio somewhere amongst their junk box so Let's have a look at this. There's one of them. There's another one. Let's see. So let's see if Dick can get a get a signal. I've got to switch on the transmitter, which is under here somewhere. That's the logger. Right, I just. 28 seconds, S948, 1 second, target alpha, 105 meters, after 196, focus 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 196, Wind is quite nice, uh, it's 10 to maybe higher, 10 to 15. And uh, there's a goose. Wind is uh, about 10 to 15 from the northeast to east. And occasionally, as always, it switches around, occasion it switches around occasionally. So we'll see how well he does. Okay. Rolling. Putting on the Mobius camera. Fifty-seven. 
Okay, that's rolling, is it, Dick? Right? Okay. Do your thing, Dick. Whenever you're ready. Sounds to me as so though it's steering in the wrong direction with a compass. Yeah, Jack, may as well come and join me and listen to the radio because you may pick something up that I'm not hearing. Completely the wrong direction, we haven't changed the software, everything was correct. Listen to what he's saying. Well, listen for those parameters, because they sound good. No compass, I heard. Which is good if it stays like that, because it should then switch to the GPS only logic. anything the wrong. working and it's correct. Exactly. So it's probably... I, I think that skeg is just stopping it no. turning at all. Well, it's possible. That's the only thing we changed. It's possible that, but judging by all the boats we've done in the past, I would say that's a software bug. Geese attack. It's, it's so wrong, the direction it's going, if all the parameters spoken are correct. Can, can we try and catch what direction it's saying to steer? Yes, exactly. Listen. Steer to... 
should have been 248. To, to, did it say 200? 251, 251, I thought. Yeah. Um, should be round there. So I think he's steering, but, um, but the front just won't come round. The rudders. It, it's possible. But don't forget, the whole of the cycle, both types of logic, are trying to do the right thing with the rudder. And all the boats we've tested over the years have never gone as badly wrong with, as that. Yeah, have, you ever, have you ever put a skeg right on the front? Well, the answer is look at the boats we've got, you know. Oh, like boat, I've boat. never seen it. I'm, I'm, I've seen you out a bit. You know, but well, at the end of the day, it, it could be that. And that's the only thing we've changed. And we can easily remove it if we get the boat back. But the trouble is, if we if we restart the software, then it could be a software bug. But if we if we able to recover it and um, uh, leave the software running, okay, yeah. Yeah. but basically rip that uh, skeg off, which is it's not a skeg, but that extra peel off. But yeah, that would test that one and get that out the loop. So the pole might be useful. So, If you can get it, Dick. Right. Dick's going to see if he can recover the boat with the pole. Leave the software running. And then we'll rip off that extra keel at the front and see if we can see a difference. Sorry about that. I've got it. I'm just, I'm, I'm just watching the rudder. Yeah, if I know. If you, if you can get out now, I'm, I'm doing one long take. Can we, yeah, can no, we... no, no. Oh, sorry. What I want to do is go back. I'll rip the stick ex, the uh, extra keel off, and we'll chuck it in from the same launch point with the software still running. So we can say it's probably not the software. Well, we could do that here, couldn't we? No. Right. I want it from the same conditions. Right. 
Okay. Yeah. You got it? Yeah, yeah. No. I don't think the rudder's moving enough. Yeah, well, we'll look, we'll look at it, but don't get that, no software change mode, so it could be a software bug that's come up. Right, we remember the poles there. Oh, you don't have to carry the pole as well, as long as you remember. <laughs> well, that's the first example of where two people might have been needed, but only because we were trying to keep the software running so it could be Dick's hunch and he's right the only thing that we changed is that extra bit of keel at the front and that might might make made a dramatic dis difference on the steering so rather than a subtle change which I'd hoped right so whatever's easy if you lay it down Dick, just drop the pole, whatever's easy. Right, I'll uh, I'll stop it. That might have both in that wide angle from about here. Yeah, I've got that, I'm rolling. Yeah, no, not rolling yet. Oh. Right, we're rolling. Right, uh, Robin's going to remove this uh, keel to see if that has an effect. He's selected his tool. A little bit of deft, deft work here going on. Got and hey presto, <laughs> that's all done very easily. <laughs> right. Got that, have we? Has it stopped yet? No. OK, roll in. Right, Dick's now going to try it without its extra keel at the front. Yeah. Worthwhile test to do confirms its software. But he may not want to come back to you, Dick. Ah, it Dick. I just heard it say target Delta. And I know why. It's because just where you are, there's a box to make it switch to Delta for testing. Brilliant. So, there may have been a software bug, uh, but it could well have been the keel. 
and the process of it going wrong due to the keel uh, brought it back to a spot which made it switch for testing purposes to Delta. In which case it should go to Delta near the island, not far from where those boats are. Oh, that's great news if that's the only problem. Come on, the focus. Focus went. I've got to look and see which way round the rudder was pointing in case it's gone and reversed itself. It should. I know it shouldn't have done. No, but you're right. Yeah. It's, it's behaving a bit like it did the other day. It's not heading very... I mean, it shouldn't have gone from there and got itself into that box. Yeah, I, I, my hunch is not because... Uh, you haven't touched anything on the software, so no, that's why I think... No, absolutely it's... not. The only th change was that rudder, that keel, uh, and the fact that it's going exactly to Delta. Well, so it's going to turn now. That is where Delta is, just where it is now. So he should hit Delta and then come back to base. Yeah, could be. There you go. Brilliant. So he's now coming back to base, so I think it'll be an accurate return. And I think you were right that the it was that uh, keel on the front. Despite all the boats we've done where it weren't sensitive, it's clear that it's that sensitive. I just think logic, you know, stick something that far on the front and the front will never swing. Because well, it's too far. The lever, do you think of the yeah. leverage of it? The turning points yeah. in the middle of the Well, of course, field. the rudder on this boat is much smaller than all the rudders on the other boats. So, uh, but that's I, brilliant. I think you want something like that on my drawing, just a small triangle, gaffer taped on to test it on the front of the tip. Well, we could do the same. I, the first thing I'm going to do is two things. I'm definitely going to... Um, uh, saw that uh, thing down, but also I'll probably put a bigger rudder on because that rudder is smaller than all of the ones we've got. And the only reason we got away with it is because it's so sensitive with that narrow keel. So, uh, but at the end of the day, it just reinforces the same thing, isn't it? That you've got to change one thing at a time. Otherwise, if, if I change the software, we'd say, oh, blind it. Is he still coming back towards it? Yes, he is. Yeah. And he's... It's interesting, he's doing exactly what he should do, which is compensating for the wind. Yeah. Right? Because normally... Yeah. That, well, the thing is, if, if that had been compass steering, he would have been pointing the boat at us and doing a big arc. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because uh, at that speed... Yeah, he's, he's coming close to the wind. So, at the moment... So he gets blown downwind because he was too close to the wind and then he should turn hard into the wind and us. Yeah. Doing the best he can to do a straight course. Ah, brilliant. And it's great because well, well we've got a, a chance for these sort of intensive, intensive tests this week. I can say right. Probably don't change the software at all at the moment and just say sort that thing at the front and also make sure we've got more steering power, which is just the size of the rudder. And we might use a skeg there at the back, which is um, that uh, when we had them, it was to protect the rudder. The skeg, I think, goes yeah, under yeah, it. Yeah. He's, he's doing exactly what he should do. That's 
my back. That must be 15. Every now and again, of course, he, like he's there, he's falling off. But the whole point is that business of the balance of the boat. When he falls off the wind, he should get up, up a bit of speed, right, based on him just randomly turning. And then he should switch to, you know, say, right, I'm going in the wrong direction, whack me rudder over. So he'd better do that better with a little bit more rudder. could actually be when we actually look at the thing we say no we don't need that thing at the front at all and there's some other little tweak we can do because it, it was because um, <laughs> what, what I was looking at on the track was the a kind of you see a wobble there right and I was trying to get get rid of that wobble see that so that is now doing a very zigzag route so, you know, well, ideally what you're looking for is something that is just trimming itself yeah. to go in a nice straight line and gradually, when it's got it wrong, it adjusts itself. Right, you're going to do the business? Whenever it's convenient, you can turn the camera off, but it's up to you, Dick. No, no problems, bring it back. Yeah, whatever you like. I'll just catch it. Right, okay, camera going off. Right, still catching this so that we could see how easily one person could do everything. Might not have your skills, of course, and experience. <laughs> right. Hang on, mate. It's all right. Okay, Dick. All right. Well, having uh, Rob, Robin and I have discussed it, and we feel that um, the the forward keel, skeg, whatever you want to call it, uh, was provides too much uh, surface area forward of the pivot point that the, the boat will turn around. So we want we want that effect, but not to such a degree. So. Uh, we've agreed that possibly a sheet of plastic here to extend that area in front of the pivot point, taped in place, and then a quick trial to see how that um, uh, affects the sailing. Right, I agree with that. Even though I was saying no earlier, silly Robin. <laughs> right, uh, so I think we're going to go straight to our final bit, which is where we both say bye-bye. So it's... Bye-bye from me. And goodbye from him. <laughs>